Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I have come with a new video on electricity and today we are going to just get a basic idea regarding magnetism. Now, we already know about the basic properties of magnetism, therefore I am not going to explain you that thing but we are going to learn a new term and its meaning today in the chapter magnetism and we are going to then continue with electricity. And today's topic is going to be very interesting and uh, it's not a boring chapter. Okay, physics is never boring but still this chapter is the very interesting chapter. Now, when we in our childhood when we are played with the magnet then we have often saw that two magnets are attracting each other means suppose we are taking uh, so this thing I have drawn what, uh, means a uh, rough diagram of earth. Okay, just I need to explain you one term as I have already told for that uh, this picture is needed. So often in our childhood we have noticed that one face of the magnet is attracting another magnet and if we are just, just turning the face of a particular magnet then it is repelling. Why does this happen? Because we know that the basic properties of a magnet, what are they? That north and north pole repels, means light pole repels and light pole attracts. We have the directive property that a when a magnet is suspended freely it will always lie in north-south direction. Next we have the attractive property that it attracts the magnetic materials. What are magnetic materials? Materials that are attracted by a magnet. And non-magnetic materials are those materials which are not attracted by a magnet. Next we have uh, that poles cannot exist independently. They have to always exist in a pair. Okay, suppose there is a magnet like this. Over there we have two poles. If we are breaking this magnet, then we will get two individual pieces. This will become my north, this will become my south. And over here, this will become my north and this is south. So new south pole is made over here and over here new south pole is made. Rather it is it is form. Okay. Now what is the important term that we have to know? The important term is magnetic declination. So what is the term? That is magnetic declination. It's a very easy concept but still it is important. Now what is magnetic declination? Those who already know, for them it's a very easy thing but those who are means, those means people who are new to this term, they will just feel like oh what is this word. But after my explanation I am sure that you will come to know. So, magnetic declination is literally a consequence that a person needs to face while he or she is walking towards the North Pole using a magnet. As if, suppose a person from here, suppose I am using one magnet, uh, compass and I am trying to walk towards North Pole and reach the um, it's North Pole over here. This is our, this is our geography, the North Pole we all we all know, we have studied in geography. As a, uh, if we are just, this is a gross diagram, but generally our earth is a flat, little bit flat from the above and bottom portion and it's little tilted. But over here I am drawing it like this, so that, when, since I am explaining physics, I am not explaining geography, therefore I am just drawing a rough view. Or I am rather drawing a rough diagram. Now magnetic declination, now what is the consequence? Now we know that there is a magnet situated in the center portion of our earth like this. And this magnet is also tilted. Okay, along with the earth, this magnet is also tilted. Okay. This magnet is also tilted. This is our south pole, this is our north pole. Now the first thing that we have to know is geographical north pole is having the uh, side or the south pole of the magnet situated in the middle of the earth is the direction in which the south pole lies in the, the means, let me just repeat my words this magnet okay over here we have the south pole right so people may think that why the means we are writing it as geographical north pole. Why we are not writing it as geographical south pole? 
because we have the job means south pole over here of the magnet situated but why we are using it as a north pole in the field of geography we will come to it we will know about the fact but this we have to know that if this is the geographical north pole then the magnet that is situated towards that particular direction will have my south pole okay same goes for the bottom one this is my south pole and this is my north pole okay it's a opposite version now suppose i am this is my middle right now i am using one compass over here suppose i am standing in the middle and i am using one compass now we know that south pole attracts north pole now the north pole of the compass will be attracted by the south pole of the magnet situated on or buried under the earth i repeat the north pole of my compass will be attracted by the south pole of the magnet buried under the earth okay in case if we are standing over here if if we stand it means i'm taking that i'm standing over here then also south pole will be attracting the north pole and this needle will be facing the same direction now suppose i'm i'm this so i'm walking from this middle portion towards this direction but i am having a motive to reach the north pole but see this is my north pole but this is not right so if we are just walking using a compass then we will reach over here rather than reaching over here we are going to reach over here so this is the consequence that a person need to face that while he is using a compass and trying to walk towards the north pole he is going a little tilted as a he is just moving a suppose 2 3 kilometers or some distance or some degrees away from the real north pole so this is magnetic declination now since the north pole of my compass is pointing towards the top portion of the earth therefore we are taking it as geographical north pole and we are taking it as geographical south pole now when the marchers we have the marchers we have the geographers like the europeans they were the first one to discover places on earth now while they were using it as a part of geography only means why they were in turn to discover america and other places present they used to use this compass and while using this compass they saw that they are going on the top portion okay rather than going from the below means rather than going below they are going on top of the earth therefore they named it as geographical north pole and this one is geographical south pole since the magnets that were used by the explorers the marchers or the traders obviously their compass is their north pole is pointing towards the top portion therefore the top portion we know as our geographical north pole that's it next we have the repulsion is our surest test for magnet and etc acha now if we are uh, next we have electromagnetism now i've already done one video a practical video on electro electromagnet okay so you can go and check out and uh, nothing is over here and over i mean in that electro means in that practical video i've explained nicely about electromagnetism with practical version but let me take a give you a brief idea that some uh, where are been wounded around a soft iron core and the two free ends let me draw this is a soft iron core and these are the wounds of my uh, these are the wounds of my insulated copper wire and if we just if we are attaching these two portion with a battery it's a symbol of a battery then we will see that this core temporarily is behaving like a magnet okay that's it and nothing else now coming to electricity the main topic of today's video now what are electric charges first of all let us know what is electricity now like the term electricity is related with electric charges now what are electric charges now when electricity is produced we all know so in my i have also made one video on this thing 
energy over there i have told, told you about electricity so electricity is a form of energy first of all okay it's a the form of energy now over here we have the indulgement of electrons the main duty or the main function is played by electrons now if we are just taking a look at atom then this is the atom this is the atom in the center of the atom we have nucleus in the nucleus we have new proton and neutron we all have learned in chemistry okay in class 6 or in class 7 we all have learned in chemistry that an atom consists of a nucleus in its center nucleus consists of proton and neutron and around the nucleus the electrons roams about like this is the sun and these are the planets same way they all roam about now we have the shells k shell m shell n shell like this first we have two electrons next shell means it depends on the number okay but this, that is a concept of chemistry i am not teaching chemistry over here therefore i am not going to tell but the thing that we have to know is atom as a whole is neutrally charged particle why when we see a particular thing neutrally charged when number of negative charge and number of positive charge i think these terms are known to you these are not new okay we all are very prone to these words from class 6 only we are very prone to these words therefore i don't think it's new so i'm using this scientific words okay so when we can only say a thing neutral when neg the number of negatively charged particle is equal to the number of positively charged particle according to atom proton is my positively charged particle electron is my negatively charged particle and neu neutron is neutrally charged but the number of electrons and number of protons are always same and they are the basic fundamental particles okay we know that this neutron proton electron these three are the fundamental particles of an atom therefore number of electrons and number of protons if they are same then atom as a whole becomes neutral and this is applicable for all the atoms otherwise atoms would have been charged okay so since we don't get them charged therefore we see that they are neutral since the number of positive charge and negative charge is same rather number of protons and number of electrons are same now we can only get hold of electricity when we will see that these electrons are getting away from the orbits these are known as orbits means the shells or the paths in which the electron roams about around a nucleus is known as their orbits so electricity is only exhibited if the electrons is roaming it it becomes free from the orbit means it jumps out okay therefore then only so like this electron is now going out okay leaving the orbit so this electron will constitute electricity but huge number of electrons are needed okay through this one electron nothing is possible but yes if we are just doing some more experiments then in some fields this one electron also proves a uh, big deal okay it also proves itself now we have static electricity static electricity is not so important so i'm not going to explain now what we are going to do is the si unit of electrical charge is coulomb okay there is we have like now let us just know this thing the charge Okay, charge is coulomb. Okay, this thing let me just read out once. One paragraph I am just reading out. Okay, I think that this paragraph is important. Therefore, I am reading out. We all know objects are made up of tiny particles called atoms. Every atom contains two types of charged particles: protons and electrons. The particles which carry negative charge are electrons, whereas the particles carrying the positive charge are protons. 
The protons are concentrated in the nucleus at the center of an atom and the electrons move around the nucleus in orbits. The nucleus also contains neutrons which are electrically neutron part neutral particles. Under normal circumstances, the amount of negative and positive charges are of, of an atom are equal. The equal and opposite charges on an atom cancel each other and the atom remains electrically neutral. When these charges stay on an, on an object, they constitute static electricity, not important. Whereas, moving charges constitute electric current or simply electricity. Okay, so if electrons are moving or if they are in a motion, then it constitutes electric charges. Now, the SI unit of electric charge is Coulomb. We have the SI unit of current is Ampere. Current also we have. We have potential difference. Potential difference is a term related to that, but we are not going to discuss about it. Okay? If we are discussing about resistance, then only this potential difference is needed. But individually, in some fields, potential, uh, potential difference is needed in some fields. But in today's topic, we are not going to discuss. Neither about current nor about potential difference. Okay, so, uh, so potential difference, the uh, unit is volt. All these are SI units. And the last thing that we have is time. No, this is not the last thing. We have one word. Time is my seconds. And we have resistance. That is ohms. And ohms is represented through this symbol. Okay? Through this symbol. Okay? These are the important terms needed for this chapter. Now we know, now electric current. Atoms of most metal contents very loosely bound negatively charged electrons in their outermost two orbits. Electrons can be knocked out easily and are called free electrons. In case if the electrons move out from its orbit, then it becomes free electrons. Under ordinary conditions, free electrons move randomly in all directions in a material. When free electrons are made to flow in a particular direction, they constitute electric current or electricity. So, electric current. So, suppose from this object, electrons are moved out. Now, they will start moving in a random motion or random direction. In case if, are, if they are moving in a particular direction, then only they can constitute current or electric current. Current or only current or electric current. Over here it's not visible. That's why I can write over here. electric current or only current ok now an electric current is defined as the amount of charge flowing past the point in a unit time as if a current can be represented by I Q can be uh, this Coulomb can be represented through Q ok and this seconds can be represented obviously by S. It's universally accepted. So if we are just taking a look at the formula, then I current equals to Coulomb, that is Q by time. Because you see, electric current is defined as the amount of charge flowing past a unit time. So amount of Coulomb flowing past in one second is known as current or ampere. So 1 ampere equals to 1 coulomb by 1 second. Okay. Now we have the sources of electricity. We have two types of uh, means sources of electricity. We have the electric cells first of all. We can also receive electricity from our mains. But electric cells are also used. Battery cell that we use in our remotes. They are the electric cells. Okay. 
Next, primary cells. Now, primary cells and secondary cells are the types of cells. More than one cell is combined together, then it forms battery. Primary cells are those cells that can be used only once. Secondary cells are those cells which can be used to multiple time through charging. New electrons have been added. After the electrons gets over, new electrons are added through charging. That's it. Next we have electric circuits and circuit diagram. Now what is an electric circuit? An electric circuit is a closed path through which electric current can flow. So in my practical video, I also show you one more thing that over there you will see that I have uh, glow and this thing, glow and uh, light bulb, small experimental light bulb. That was a circuit, but it was not having a complete sense of circuit because incomplete. It was a incomplete circuit because it doesn't have any key or uh, switch. It doesn't have any resistor. Therefore, it was a rough practical that I have shown to you all but I will come with one more practical over there I will be using keys, switches and all the other resistors and everything ok now what is the electric thing this thing now first we are no, first let us come to know about the symbols cell represented by this plus minus battery first second battery more than one cell so one two means one cell again one more cell minus plus minus plus number three we have ammeter or ammeter several pronunciation can be found this is represented like this next we have galvanometer voltmeter Volt meter is represented as like this. Right, individually we have the ammeter, volt meter, but then to in today's modern generation, such a meter is found where we can find all the categories. Okay, all the uh, means these kinds of heads are present. Okay, next we have galvanometer. Galvanometer is represented through an arrow. Okay, it is represented through an arrow. Next, we have bulb, electric bulb. The electric bulb has three symbols. But the most appropriate one also I will tell. This is the first, second, third. Okay. But the most appropriate one is this one. This one is the most appropriate one. So, even you can use these, but in many schools only these symbol is allowed. Next we have switch. Switch and key we have. Achha, for switch we have two categories. If it is open, open switch then it can be either represented like this or like this and switch and key are having the same symbols okay since they constitute the same uh, feature therefore symbols are also same if it is a closed then it will be like this either this or like this and the last we have that is resistor which is represented like this okay that's it now let us draw one circuit and we will understand Coming to circuits. Now when we are talking about circuit, then first we will have some wires connected to bulb. 
these are my bulb okay these are my bulb at first i am drawing a normal circuit then i will uh, draw the circuit with other equipments like switch resistor and all that this is a simple circuit drawn with one cell and a bulb and if a bulb is glowing glowing bulb is represented like this and closed or if a bulb is disconnected then it is either shown like this or a disconnection is shown like this okay and since this bulb is glowing okay this is the we have to give an arrow like this now one would think protons cannot move only electrons can move protons are fixed but still we are giving an arrow which represents that a proton is moving but this thing is only universally accepted okay we never show that the electrons are moving we always show that the means we never show that the electrons are moving we always show that the protons are moving okay so the flow of charges means the symbol means the symbol is always drawn opposite to the flow of charges if the charges are flowing like this mainly the charge is flowing like this it is flowing like this but we will give opposite arrows okay we will give opposite arrows as if the protons are moving towards electrons okay so this was a simple circuit now let us add some equipments now this is my bed we have connected one bulb over here next we are adding one key that uh, means cell over here after adding the cell let's so let us add battery rather than cell this is the battery from here we are connecting one switch from the switch means from or from here we are connecting a resistor and then we are connecting the circuit let me give the resistor in this portion so we have the now the key is open over here see this is my open key and since the key is open electrons are not moving therefore bulb is not glowing also but over here we have used one resistor what is the work of the resistor to reduce the speed of the flow of charges okay it provides resistance to the uh, electrons okay it opposes the flow of electrons it slows down okay it slows down the flow now charges are moving now as soon as we are just making it or we are just pressing the switch to make it a closed circuit then we will see that the bulb starts glowing and this is also a simple circuit now we have the two types of circuit one is my parallel circuit and there is my series circuit now what is parallel circuit what is series circuit That's it. That's it. Okay. 
Now in case of, this is my series circuit, I forgot to give the heading. Okay. In case of my parallel circuits, over here, same amount of electrons are not moving. Okay, some electrons are moving to blow up this one. Some move, electrons are moving to blow up this one. Okay. Now in case we are turning on the switch, then this will also start going, this will also start going. But in case, suppose, this bulb gets damaged and by chance if the electrons are not moving through this, through this bulb, then there will be no effect on another bulb. It will keep on going. Since electrons are not now going over there, it is going here. But in case of series circuit, in case we are turning on the switch, same amount of electrons are flowing. First through this bulb, second through this bulb. In case if one bulb gets disconnected, then other one will also get disconnected. And this is all about series uh, and parallel circuits. Last topic of this chapter that we have is electrical resistance. Okay. And in this video, I am only explaining the important things. Okay. There are much more things to be explained, but the since it is not possible to cover up or cope up with all the topics in one video, therefore I am just abbreviating means I am just gisting it as if I am just making it smaller as much as it we can as it, as I can, and I am just explaining the important points. Otherwise, chapter will become boring. Okay, if I am just elaboratively explaining you the chapter then it will become boring. Therefore, I am just shortening the chapter and telling you the important things which is really needed for this chapter. Achha, next we have electrical resistance. Now the property of a material due to which it opposes the flow of current uh, through it it is known as resistance. Already told. Now we have resistors provides resistance. Okay. Now we have conductors. What are conductors? Conductors. First we have conductors, insulators, resistors. Now conductors. So now if we are relating it with light, then what? We, it's a very interesting thing over here. What we know that through transparent object light passes easily. So this is my transparent. Through opaque objects light cannot pass. Through translucent, the translucent object light can pass very partially. So now you will see through conductors electrons can move freely. Through conductors electrons can move through insulators, electrons cannot move. Conductors, example, we have silver, steel, copper, lead, all the metals. Okay, brass, living plants, tin, even human body. Now we have insulators. Insulators, plastic, glass, nylon, ebonite. We have backlight, cotton, wood, cork, pure water. Pure water, I mean the distilled water. Water. Obtained after distillation, rubber, leather, polythene, alcohol, and etc. But what about resistors? Over here, partially, it's partial electrons or electrons. Electrons can flow partially. And that's it. No more. But what are the materials used to make this thing? Uh, this resistors. We have tungsten, constantin, nichro, and etc. And these are the typical resistors. And we have uh, high resistance. Means these conductors are having low resistance since it is allowing the electrons to move. And insulators are having high resistance since it is not allowing the electrons to move. And resistors partial. Okay. 
that was all for today's video hope you have liked my video if you like my video please like share and subscribe also press the bell icon to get the notification of the uploaded video in my next video or in my next session i will come to i will try to come with more new interesting topic but for today till here and uh, i will also explain some more points on this chapter in future okay because there are more points to cover some easy easy points so with those easy points i will make another video okay so till then bye